In this video, you're gonna understand the differences between pickleball and tennis. More specifically, I'm gonna be going over the different techniques between each sport and as well as the different strategies. In pickleball, in general, you mostly want top spin in your shots. And in tennis, most players like to mix up lots of slicing and top spin, but in pickleball, top spin is a key part of the game. So let me demonstrate that with a drop shot. Here we go. Top spin drop. Just like that. So the difference is a lot of players, especially coming from tennis, like to hit these nasty slices. And sometimes it's good, but in general, it's gonna be very inconsistent. So this is the crazy slice that we don't want. And I hit it straight in the net. <laughs> so what we're trying to do is use more topspin or a flat stroke. So a flat one is just hitting normal and then topspin is down to up like that. So what we don't want to do is this. We don't want that weird slice shot. <laughs> It can work, but it's not always good. So there are exceptions to using a slice. In general, I like to mostly use a slice on my backhand, but again, it's not a big swing. It's still small and compact. So you're trying to keep it out in front of you, and all you're doing is swinging from down to up and keeping this arm locked. You're not using wrist, you're just keeping it locked like this. Here we go. So this is a slice backhand drop. Do another one. So here's another example of using a slice shot. Again, it's not a crazy big swing. It's just right in front of you. Um, this is the slice dink. And again, this is on my backhand, not on my forehand. On my forehand, I still like topspin. Uh, let's demonstrate a slice backhand dink. Ready, Sam? So forehand topspin, slice backhand. So another huge error I see from tennis players coming into pickleball is they like to have these huge swings. So they'll bring it here and go all the way around. And what you want to do instead is you want to condense it to a smaller swing. So instead of doing a big rounded swing, you want to keep it to your side or in front of you and swing up from here. It doesn't need to be big. Um, so I'll show you what that looks like. Here is a super bad example of hitting with a huge swing instead of a condensed swing. And I hit that straight in the net. <laughs> I'll do another bad one. That was decent, but the issue is, if you do such a big swing, it's super inconsistent. So condensing it minimizes errors and makes you way more consistent on a drive. So another common mistake from tennis players coming to pickleball is they think that the serve needs to be a winner or a super hard shot. And in reality, all you need to do is make it and put a little bit of depth on it. So here's an example, a bad example of me trying to kill a serve, and I don't need to. <laughs> and that was okay, but I'm gonna be super inconsistent. So here's another, here's a good example. I'm trying to hit it deep, and then keep my opponent back, and it doesn't need to be super big. So the last point I'm gonna make is, this is the biggest one by far, is that tennis players love this baseline right here. They will stay here as long as they can because they feel really comfortable. But in pickleball, you need to move up to the kitchen line to win the point. It's around 65% of your points won are at this kitchen line. So as much as you can, you're trying to get up there and not get stuck here at the baseline. Um, so let's show a half court example. I'm gonna serve, he's gonna return. After I drop, I'm gonna make my way to the kitchen line. Here we go. Oh! 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> so this is a bad example of me staying at the baseline. Oh. <laughs> and that's why you don't stay back because that happens. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Make sure that you subscribe so that you can see all future videos.